federal investigators who are investigating the Champlain Towers condominium collapse down in the Miami suburb of Surfside, Florida. They gave us a quick update to bring us up to speed of the work that they've done since last June on the investigation into this collapse. And they have found two possible other things that were wrong with this building and it was concentrated in the pool deck and they also announced that they think that they might be able to recover some of the security camera video from some of the damaged hard drives now as you know in the past we've showed you what we have and all we have so far from videos that actually captured the collapse of this condo is the one video from the security camera from the condominium next door, uh, from the 87 Park condominium next door. This is the famous video that we've all seen a million times. And the other one, which I've showed you before here, is the ring camera video of the collapse. So these are really the only two videos we have so far of the actual building collapsing. And they're hoping to recover more off of these hard drives. So we're going to take a look into both of these today. I want to take a look at what NIST found here because this is one of the two construction errors that was discovered here and this was discovered i believe after their june update so this likely happened over the summer of 2023 when they were sifting through all of the construction debris brought over to the warehouse to try to figure out what was going wrong so as we see here in the as built condition here is the note that they made here it says typically fewer than the specified number of column strip top reinforcing bars are centered over the column in the pool deck slab. And you go, what the heck does that mean? So here's what they're showing us here in this picture. So as we look at this photograph that they presented here, this is the column going left to right. And then this is the slab right here going across the top of the column. But what they discovered was you can see here, they're pointing, there's only two of this lab top reinforcement bars here coming out going in the horizontal direction and they're saying that there should have been four going across this column and there's same thing in the vertical direction here there's only two rebars going across here and there should have been four there so that is a problem so to show you what this means and what the significance of the importance of this is here's a typical framing plan on the floor plans from champlain tower south and it's the basement level but it is pretty much the same on all of the levels so as we look at each of the columns going across on the pool deck area here the shorthand for what they wrote here was the design calls for there to be 16 of the number five rebar rods going in the horizontal direction here this is the column strip area that they call it and so so with the 16 rebar number five rods, they go horizontal here and they're supposed to be spaced from here at the bottom all the way across up here to the top. And then likewise, they're supposed to be, it looks like 19 of the number fives, like in this particular spot here, going in the vertical direction across here. And then when we look on some of the typical notes here, especially like on the second floor framing plan. So this is page 110 out of 336 for those of you keeping score at home. Otherwise known down here as they say S6 of 14. But if you look at their note number five here, do you see this? Let me zoom in on this here for you. So it says right here, at least 25% of all of the column strip reinforcement shall be centered over the column as explained in the typical flat plate details C sheets S11. So I made this PowerPoint slide here for you to illustrate how it's supposed to look. This is very close to how it should be. But so we have 16 of these number five rebar rods going this way, across like this. And there's your column strip reinforcement. So this whole slab area is right around the column. And you can see I've made it so that I have four of those rebar rods going across. The column and then when you apply the other ones going across it the whole area should look like this with your rebar rods and there should be four going horizontal and four going vertical as NIST showed you on their presentation there it looked like they were only showing that there was two rebar rods coming out of one direction and two coming out of the other direction so in essence uh, I kind of made this drawing here to show you how it ended up looking like so they were finding just the two rebar rods here in the middle of that column strip reinforcement area well, by now you're probably wondering, okay, whose fault is this? Is it the fault of the contractor, the builder there? Or is it the engineer's fault that this happened? Was something done illegally here? Did they purposely not put down the correct amount of rebar in order to save rebar? Was it an innocent mistake? Did somebody, maybe when they were putting it all together down there, looked at all of the rebar and said, I don't think we can get this to fit right. We're gonna have to remove a few. And maybe they didn't think there was anything wrong. 
But one thing I can tell you is if the engineer saw what was going on here, he'd probably be banging his head against the wall because he's like, I specified in the notes here that you gotta have four of these rebar rods over that column there, not two. This is where I think that the engineer has some culpability here too. This is such an important thing here to have the, these four rebars going over that column. It probably should not have been buried as note number five in a list of other things that can easily be lost in the shuffle. So just like I pointed out in my video last month on the FIU bridge collapse, you know, if it's so important to you, you shouldn't bury it on this other page. It should be in bold red letters, maybe on the front of the floor plans or somewhere else. The other construction issue that NIST pointed out to us that they discovered here while searching through the slab deck remains of the Champlain Towers condo collapse says here the measured spacing of the top reinforcing bars in the column strips of the pool deck slab specimens commonly ranges from 20% to about 40% wider than required by the structural design drawings resulting in less reinforcing and the column strips then is required by the design. So what this means is this, and if we zoom in and look at the picture here, you can see that the distance between this rebar right here in the center of the screen and then the one below it is, see how it's small? But then the distance to the next one is big, and then the distance between these next two is even bigger, and I think it looks like it's even getting even bigger to this one here. So what you're effectively doing here by laying these rebar rods out like this too far spaced apart is you're missing the column. So I'm assuming the column went right here. And so this is why we end up with only two of the rebars going across the, the center of that column right there. So this is another problem. This could be, you know, the cause of why we only have two of them on many of the columns there. So this here just shows to me a complete lack of adherence to the building plans by the contractor if they were indeed using the correct building plans to build this. So what they did was they took those rebar rods and they spread them out too far in the area around these columns. Instead, it should have been compacted more closer together like this, as you can see here on the PowerPoint slide that I showed you earlier that I made for you. So even though you can see my drawing is just an approximation, it kind of shows you the uniformity of what there was supposed to be here at these column slab connections. It's supposed to be evenly spaced and four rebar rods going across every column. So this means then that there was less reinforcement in the vicinity of those columns than the design required. So this could be potentially bad. And also, you know, these additional structural construction deviations further reduced the strength of the pool deck connections and the column slabs from the already compromised conditions in what NIST revealed to us at the June update from June 2023, which if you recall, I showed you in my video from August 2023. So you want to go back and check that video as well. Now NIST also updated us on whether or not the building was sinking, whether that may have caused the collapse as well. And you know, we've gotten so many, probably thousands of comments on all the videos I've uploaded about the Champlain Towers condominium collapse here in Miami. Um, they're all saying the same thing. A lot of people will say, you know, they built this condominium on sinking sand, or everybody says, this is what happens when you build a condo on a sandbar. And everybody keeps pointing to old articles that were saying Miami's gonna be underwater, that sort of thing. But NIST actually did some some invasive testing there. They wanted to see if there was any settlements under any of the loading piles beneath the foundation. And they said that potential settlements under the structural loading piles beneath the foundation have showed that there was no more than a quarter of an inch of deviation. So the NIST preliminary evaluation so far is that these quarter inch settlements had a very minor impact on the entire pool deck structure. So when NIST induced a vertical load on one of these pile columns, the max maximum effect that they saw on any of the neighboring columns was only 5%. So I think that pretty much rules out the fact that the sinking sand or the caving in foundation or the, or the king tides or anything like that had anything to do with this collapse. So also what they're doing now is NIST is focusing their attention 
upon that, what we call the 9.1 line, which is on the southern border of the building itself, the condominium building that collapsed. So for example, this right here is your pool slab on the right hand side. And then this yellow section here is the column. And this is the southernmost border of the condominium building itself, not the wall by the pool. This is the southernmost border of the actual building that collapsed. So this is called line 9.1 on the floor plans. And then this over here, this slab on the upper side, which is up 18 inches from the pool deck, is the lobby level. We've showed you in the in our previous update from August how they were doing a lot of work on this step up. How does this collapsing tear down this entire building here? What is the relationship and, and the strength of this entire connection here? And so during this phase that shows up here, they took an extra 135 cores and they're looking at the concrete properties and the slab column connections at this interface here between the pool deck and the tower. This is that line 9.1. As part of the update, NIST also summarized what they did in phases one and two A of all of their work around the pool deck. So all of these green areas here are where they've taken 127 concrete cores to date. They have also taken samples of the reinforcing bars in some of these areas. And look at here up at this green one. You notice this one right here, this little, that looks like my famous H-beam, the infamous H-beam. That's the one that I, if you remember, I did that video where I showed that I, hey, I thought maybe there might've been another column on the floor here that was either planted or maybe they were starting to do some work, we don't know, or, but it certainly wasn't in the floor plans at all. A lot of people had commented that they think that it was the little K column that was here on the H-beam and that it had somehow fallen off during the collapse and embedded itself into the floor right here. Although I think that is pretty highly unlikely. But as you can see here, this is my exclusively obtained video of the H-beam. Um, this is the first time you are seeing this. No other channel has shown you this. In fact, they better not be because I obtained this exclusively. So you are seeing it first here on this channel, uh, this exclusive drone video view of the H-beam. So here's the area that they're talking about. I'll show you right here on the map. So here's that 9.1 line. You see it here on the floor plan on the far right. So there's your 9.1 line. And it's really this blue shaded region that I created here for you. And these blue squares are those columns that they're talking about. So that's the interface between the building columns and the step up is right here. It's the interface between that and the pool deck, which is now over here. And I'll show you in a second how it all fits together there. And then all of these red beams you see here are in the garage ceiling below underneath this pool deck, which is right here. So I'll show it to you here. I'll make it more transparent. Here we are looking at the floor plan there. And then I'll bring in the pool deck for you to see. See that right there? So that is what it's really doing. These are the red beams that I just showed you on the floor plan. And they're supporting those planters. And then there's sort of where your blue line for the... Uh, southern wall of the building is going to be. So this is where everything started to collapse in this area on the building itself when this condo collapsed. Okay, And then, of course, here's your 9.1 line over here. So that's really what they're referring to. And then the H-beam was sitting over here somewhere. Now, in regards to this 9.1 line, NIST has also acquired all of the concrete mixture that they would have used back in 1981 when the building was first constructed and so they've taken this blend and they sent it off to two different universities and they're going to reconstruct these step-up connections to the columns there and they're going to determine whether or not this had anything to do with the building collapsing. NIST also announced that they've recovered probably about 25 hard drives after about 100 hours of work. Some of them are in really bad shape and so they're going to send them off to these specialty labs that can open up the platters and possibly put the platters into new hard drives and spin them up and see if they can't recover any data on them and they're hoping to recover additional security camera video. By the way, none of the security camera videos were saved on the cloud like people initially thought. So we are assuming that Forensic Strategy Services is going to be doing the data recovery for them. And I'm also assuming that this picture that they supplied is one of the hard drives after it was opened up because it looks like it's got a lot of dirt and sand in it. So hopefully they'll get some video out of this. That's what we're all hoping for. And as usual, we'll keep you up to date as we get more information out of NIST, and we will also keep you up to date on that Ocean Gate Titan submarine implosion investigation as the Coast Guard releases more information on that. Put it down next to that. 
So anyway, thank you so much for joining us, and we will see you on the next one.